Howdy. All right. I'm Michael Townsend, and I am going to share with you some of the works that I'm known for, but I want to dive into the world of some of my favorite artists right now, which are the women and men of corporate America. So to get there, as you heard, I make a living drawing with tape. Tape art, as we know it today, was invented right here in Providence about 27 years ago. And if you were to stumble across a tape art drawing, you might see something like this. Now, what you're seeing here is a pack of artists working without any preliminary sketches on a wall. And they are making a massive drawing that eventually, once it's finished, will be up for less than 24 hours and then removed. Now, for the last 27 years, I've been working with different teams of artists. And our job is to find these blank walls and in the least amount of time, make the most amount of impact. So what's kept me engaged with these drawings, I've done over 500 of these things all over the world. And where the joy of it is, is in the collaborative process. When we get to a wall, we have no idea what we're going to make. So we have ourselves making, but we have, more importantly, the public. And the public is there, and they are empowered to talk to us, ask questions, and figure out what our motivations are, what our methods are, and they influence the direction of the mural's content, and in a lot of cases, will participate in its creation. And then they will help us remove it. I love making work with other people, and there are some cases in our catalog of tape art drawings where I have done work by myself, and I'll share one example with you. This is a drawing of 1,700 squirrels. To make a drawing like this, all you have to do is go to the same location every day, and for 14 hours a day, just, just draw squirrels. If, if you do that for two weeks, you will have a drawing of 1,700 squirrels. Now, the stages of this drawing are about five minutes of maybe innovation and then two weeks of squirrel craft. Uh, when this drawing was done, it was up for a total of five minutes. It was documented and then removed. What's kept me engaged in this medium for so long is that we can travel and work with different communities and produce new things. We as public artists do that, but the other half of my life is teaching tape art. I started teaching tape art in earnest about 22 years ago. Started in uh, Boynton Beach, Florida in a, in a community center that had two rival gangs in it. Now, despite their differences, the one thing they seem to like to do is draw together. They had chosen this one building to spend time together, and we gave them an opportunity to sort of really, truly claim it as theirs. After working with these gangs, we felt empowered to go work with, I guess, the next hardest group, which is uh, K through six. Uh, <laughs> and that naturally led us to middle school, high school, and then we're working with art students, and then grad students. And then we took this gigantic leap to working with uh, folks in senior centers. So sort of a cradle to the grave mentality. And, but we're missing about a bunch of people in, the, in between here. Uh, senior centers bring us into the art and healing world. And that gets us into hospitals. And then we're working in psychiatric facilities, correctional facilities, and prisons. But we're still missing a lot of people. And, and those people I'm talking about are the adults. Where do you find the adults? Uh, for the most part, they're at work. So I have an in. I can get to them at work. Quick biographical note. My father was in the Marines. He was in the Marines for 20 years, and when he got out, he went into the corporate world. Uh, he was there for a couple of years, and then he retreated. And working with my mother, who is a writer and an editor, the two of them started writing books together about quality, excellence, and leadership. So in the mid-'80s, these two ended up at the, uh, the front of the quality movement. By the mid-'90s, they're traveling around the world doing leadership workshops in companies of all sizes. Simultaneously, I'm doing tape art exercises in small community centers. And they realize we would be the perfect opening act for them. So by the mid-90s, they're bringing us in, and we are doing tape art with guys in ties, essentially. Guys in ties drawing outer space. What my father was using this for, for his purposes, was to diagnose who was in the room and sort of see how they worked together and get a feel for who they were. As artists, though, I will share with you that, for the most part, these folks were making work that didn't move us. 
yeah, it's all right, but uh, one of the reasons I teach tape art is we get to see the medium reinvented before our very eyes. And if you work with a wide range of communities, you see a wide range of solutions, these folks were not thrilling us. So we never sought out corporate work on our own. That all changed six years ago. Uh, GE invited us to come teach a creativity workshop at their top leadership training in Austin, New York. It's a place called Crotonville. So if you're in the GE organization, that's where you're trying to get. The very first time we taught there, we saw this image, and we saw this image, and we saw this image. Now, I, at this point I'm thinking, have I stumbled across a lost tribe of artists? They, and to put this in perspective, this was made in uh, the summer of 2010. By the time I saw this, I had worked personally with over 40,000 first-time tape artists. And so I can assure you that this is in the upper 10% of super sweet drawings. Now, what you need to know about the people who made this drawing is, if you ask them if they were creative, they would tell you no, like really, really try to convince you that they were not creative. And then they'll turn around and draw you this. <laughs> so what you don't see in this drawing is Thomas Edison stepping out of a time machine because he's decided to go forward in time to go to a KISS concert. Okay, <laughs> if you ask them, are you artistic? If a group of 80 people will just, will just turn their heads and be like, no, not at all and then they will draw you this. Okay, this is an illustration of the financial crisis of 2008. <laughs> I love this drawing. Okay, if you get really specific, can you draw people? You're gonna get a resounding no, and then you might get something like this, and it's a really sort of intimate relationship between these two people they've drawn here. Let me tell you a little bit more about the people making these drawings. Uh, we work with a lot of corporations now, and GE produces by far the best work. They're the best artists we work with. There's 340,000 people in this organization, and if you have leadership chops, they will train you, they will invest in you, and you will be in front of these walls. And you might stumble across us. We've been with them for six years. In the first two years, we saw a pattern emerge. The pattern is this. If you receive more leadership training, your drawings are better. What that looks like on the ground is this. People in their 50s and 60s are outdrawing people in their 20s, 30s, and 40s, drawing circles around them. Uh, so despite their uh, additional decades of developing a bad attitude about art, they are making some of the best work. Let me put best work in context for you by showing you some bad drawings. Okay, this drawing is not so hot. This is a drawing of 10 people in a boat drawn by 10 people in an hour and a half. Same assignment, 10 people in a boat drawn by 10 people in an hour and a half. This is a better drawing, I would say. 10 people, hour and a half drawing the future. Now, senior management with the same assignment, you end up with this. So the correlation between their leadership training and the quality of their drawings became super apparent very quickly for us. Now, watching them draw, we're seeing something that is worth sharing. The folks who are able to collaborate well together are producing these, these far more intense, interesting drawings versus the folks who are good at teamwork. Now, teamwork, you, teamwork's great. You gotta use teamwork to get things done. But collaboration results in far more innovation. So, this is a drawing that I would classify as a collaborative drawing. It's the history of communication starting with cavemen. And by the center here, you see uh, the proliferation of digital information that is making everybody miserable. And they decided they need to find ways to come break this up. If I told you this was drawn by one person, you might say, yeah, I believe you. If you watch them make this drawing, you would see everyone in the drawing walk back and forth and contribute in all areas of this work. And if you listen to them make this drawing, they had an idea about where they wanted to go, and they changed their direction of how they were gonna get there two or three times. They pivoted, they collaborated. Versus teamwork. Here's a drawing I would classify as a teamwork drawing. Teamwork means that they know they have to make a drawing, and they say, okay, what's my role? And everyone said, we're gonna draw one person. And they did that. At first glance, it's okay, but if you go into it you start to see that this person here stayed in the panel, and if you look at the backgrounds, each background is different for each section. 
and there's a disparity in quality between each of the areas. They did the drawing, but they failed to innovate in any way. This is a teamwork drawing where they never even got on the same page. And here you can clearly see that two people outshined everybody else. We have the best son in Tape Art's entire history tucked away on a drawing that is not as good as it could have been. In the teamwork model, some people will demand that they have a plan. Here's the plan. They say, I will not go forward, I will not work with you unless we have a concrete goal. A concrete goal, though, results in making a drawing that has no wiggle room for change. They're, they're stuck in a sort of a 1700 squirrel situation where they know what it's going to be and they will sometimes lose uh, their enthusiasm for getting it done. In regards to collaboration versus teamwork, if a company's goal is to be innovative, to give space for innovation, we have found over and over and over again that the collaborative model gives them a chance to do so. Is the people who are good at collaboration, in a lot of these cases, have had a lot of leadership training, and that leadership training has given them sort of by accident a particular set of skills that coincide very well with art making. When companies have surveys of their CEOs and they start to identify what qualities they want in their employees, the word creativity and innovation come up over and over and over again. In our definitions, creativity is part of your fog and mirror club. It's part of who you are. And all these companies are filled to the gills with creative people. They just aren't giving them opportunities to sort of exercise those muscles. I'm going to show you the collection of images done by people that have what we refer to as creative anxiety, which means that every in person here who made these works looked us in the eye and said, I am not capable of making any sort of art. And they produce these, and they produce these. Now, here's our final thesis. These folks are receiving late in life, and these are people in their 50s and 60s, a form of art education through their leadership training. The leadership training is teaching them how to operate in ambiguity for longer periods of time, like good artists. They're able to sort of come up with grand ambitions and share those ambitions with other people. And they're able to sort of change their ideas and execute, execute, execute. Our K through 12 education could learn a little bit from this late in life education and vice versa. K through 12. If we put our focus on more collaborative art, what we're doing is we're giving people the skill sets that they'll need to sort of succeed and excel in a future workplace. And if we can sort of break up that model of sitting at our desks, sort of a model from the late 1800s of just executing drawing after drawing and being graded on it, a lot of these people carry with them the pain of that D they got on a drawing in middle school. That's when they've stopped making art. Up at the late life art education, where they can learn from K through 12 is just trying to hold on to the joy of making, the fact that they are creative beings and, and continue to have pride in that for the rest of their lives. By the time we get to them, we find that they are deeply moved when they make something that they feel is beyond their capabilities. If these companies are looking for people that are defining themselves as creative beings, we can only hope that that journey starts in K through 12 and they're able to carry that torch up into the workplace. Okay, this is going to be the last slide I'll show you. The two people standing in front of this wall were consumed by their creative anxiety. And they told us in front of a blank wall that they were, and I quote, literally the worst artists in the world. And they had told us that their mission was to draw someone smashing through a wall and behind it uh, there would be a sunny nature scene so they could verbalize what they wanted to see happen. And with 10 minutes to go, they made this. And I can share with you that the tape artist and I looked at this work and we said, wait, this is a better solution than we would have come up in the same amount of time. We, they outdrew us. And what we were able to sort of uh, infer from this is that if you can give these people the space to make mistakes, the space to experiment, that they are able to sort of uh, manifest themselves as creative beings 
and the innovation will follow shortly after. Thank you so much for taking time to look at this stuff. And um, adios.